has a headache. Yes. Uh, number two is a sore throat. Uh -huh. uh, number three, he has a cough. Yes. Number four, he has a cold. Yes. Uh, number five, uh, she she has a fever. Uh -huh. Number six is uh, he has a rash. Uh -huh. Number seven, she has a stiff neck. Very good. And number eight, uh, he has an ear ache. It's an ear ache. Ear ache, right? Number nine, he has an upset stomach. Yes. Number ten, he has a flu. Yes. Number eleven, he has uh, the chills. The chills. Which is a good sign he has a fever. The he chills. Has a fever. Chill. When you feel cold. When you run a fever, a lot of times you feel cold, you get chills. Yeah, oh, chills. The chill, okay. yes, yes, the yes. chills. Number 12, uh, he has a heart burn. Heart burn. It's when your, your stomach causes indigestion and it burns. Yes. Heart burn. Yeah. Uh, number 13, 13 is, he has a diar diarrhea. Diarrhea, that's right. And 14? And 14, he has the chest pain. Yes, chest pain. Very good. All right, we're going to listen to the CD, and they're going to read this same list of symptoms, and you can refer to the pictures. But first, we'll listen, and then we'll repeat. So let me okay. see if I can make this thing play. Mm -hmm. This is track 31. Unit 7, Health Watch, Can page 126. Yes. What do you know? Exercise B. Listen. 1. A headache. 2. A sore throat. 3. A cough. 4. A cold. 5. A fever. 6. A rash. Seven. A stiff neck. Eight. An earache. Nine. An upset stomach. Ten. The flu. Eleven. The chills. Twelve. Heartburn. Thirteen. Diarrhea. Fourteen chest pains. Listen and repeat. Okay, now repeat, Christine. One. Okay. A headache. A headache. A headache. Two. A sore throat. A sore throat. Three. A cough. A cough. Four. A cold. A cold. Five. A fever. A fever. Six. A rash. A rash. Seven. A stiff neck. A stiff neck. Eight. An earache. An earache. Nine. An upset stomach. An upset Ten. stomach. The flu. The flu. Eleven. The chills. The chills. Twelve. Heartburn. Heartburn. Thirteen. Diarrhea. Diarrhea. Fourteen. Chest pains. Chest pains. Okay. We're going to go on to um, wordplay. Some expressions for health problems have the word A 
or an before them. Some have the word the before them and some have no word before them. So if you look at this list, the first seven have the word a in front of them. And then an, when they start with a vowel, they, they use the word an, a-n. And then there are some that have the word the, the flu and the chills. And then those last three don't have any word before them at all. Yeah. So we're going to listen and complete the chart. And we're going to write the health problems in the correct column. So you're going to say, I have A, and you'll use these words that have an A. Mm -hmm. I have, and this is the ones that have no word before them at all. And then I have the, and the ones that have the word the before them. And then I have an for the words that start with a vowel sound. Okay? Okay. So let's listen to another um, track on the CD. Unit 7. Health Watch, page 126. What do you know? Exercise B. Listen. 1. A headache. It's page 126. Practice. Exercise A. I have a headache. Can you hear it, Christine? Yes. Okay. Yes. I have chest pains. I have an upset stomach. I have the flu. Mm -hmm. I have a cough. Mm -hmm. I have heartburn. I have an earache. I have the chills. Page 126. Practice. Okay, did you fill all those in, Christine? Do you want, yes. me, to go over, you want me to go over those again? Yes, I, I do. I did it. You want me to go over them one more time? No. Oh, okay. Okay, so you had, I have a headache, and then under that was cough, and I cough. have chest pains and heartburn, and the is the flu and the chills, and I have Anne is the earache and the upset stomach. Yes. All right, we're going to go on to part B. Point to the pictures, ask and answer questions about the people. When you're talking about somebody having something wrong, you'll uh -huh. say, um, what's the matter? She has a headache. What's the matter? He has chest pains. So when somebody asks you, what's the matter? They're asking about how you feel. Uh -huh. okay? okay, so they're, they're asking you, how do you feel? Um, so it can refer to a whole lot of things, but these are health problems in these particular, okay. in this particular unit. So do you have any questions about any of those, Christine? No, no. Okay. okay, down at the bottom, it says, show what you know. Do you go to the doctor? And mm -hmm. when do you go to the doctor? Do you go to the doctor, Christine? Yes. And when do you go? I go when, to the doctor when I when I I I am feeling bad. When I feel bad, yes. I go to the doctor when I feel bad. Um, it can also be because there's been some kind of an accident. You've gotten hurt. Uh -huh. um, the last time I went to the doctor, I had been bit by my cat. My cat bit me. Uh -huh. And it got infected, and I had to go to the doctor and get antibiotics. Your cat? My cat. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. she bit me, and it uh, got very infected. Yeah. So I had to get uh, antibiotics. So it can be different things why you might go to the doctor. Yeah. Um, let's look at the workbook. The workbook. vocabulary, the workbook, mm -hmm. it's on page 74 in the vocabulary. And these pictures are the same ones you see in your book. 
So you might want to leave your book open and refer back to the pictures in the book because they'll tell you what's going on because it's not always obvious what's going on. So in the exercises on page 74, if you refer back to your book, you can see what picture, because the pictures are the same as the ones in the book. In the book, it's number 11 is letter A, and that was the chills. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, letter B is a cold. Uh, no. No, letter B is it's an upset a, stomach. An upset stomach, yes. Yeah. An upset stomach. Yeah. Letter B is an upset stomach, and that was number nine. Yes. An upset stomach, and in the workbook it's on number nine, an upset stomach. Um, letter C, she has a headache. A headache. A headache. In the book that's number one, in your workbook it's let number five. So number five is letter C, mm -hmm. she has a headache. Yes. Um, I'm kind of skipping around. Would you rather I go down these in order? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Number one was the chills. That was letter A. Yes. Number two is a cold. And I think that's letter D cold. as in David. D. Yes. Um, number yes. three is a cough. A cough. It's G. I'm sorry. G. Letter G. Yes, G. G is in your last name. G. Mm -hmm. Yes. Letter G. Um, number four is an earache. That's the baby in letter E. E. Um, number five is a headache, and that was letter C. Mm -hmm. Um, number six is heartburn. H. That's letter H. Letter H, yes, letter H. Mm. Number seven is a sore throat. That's letter F. Yes. Number eight is a stiff neck, and that's letter I. Yes. And number nine is an upset stomach, and that's letter B. Letter B, yes. Okay, let's go over on the next page. And exercise B says complete the sentences. Underline the correct word. If the health problem has no word before it, underline no word. So when you don't put a word in front of it, like those last two, I think they were heartburn or three of them, heartburn, diarrhea, and chest pains. They don't mm -hmm. have another, they don't have a word in front of them. So they want you to underline no word. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Number one. Minji feels hot. She has a, she a has fever. A fever. A fever, yes. She has a fever. So you're going to underline the letter A. She has a fever. Um, number two, I feel cold. I have the chills. The chills. And it has the word the in front of it. Yeah. I have the chills. Number three, Huang can't eat. He has uh, an upset stomach. He has an upset stomach. Number four, is there a bathroom nearby? I have. Okay. I have um, a no word. No word. I have diarrhea. 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 Okay. No word. Number five, call a doctor now. Mr. Barrios has uh, has the chest pain. Chest pains. You're gonna no draw one. no word. Yes. Chest pains. Mr. Barrios has chest pains. My arm is red. I have a rash. A rash. I have a rash. 
Number seven, no onions, please. Onions give me a heart though. No word. No what? No word. Onions no. give me heartburn. No word. Okay. If you look back at your book on number 12 for heartburn, there's no word in front of heartburn. Yes. And number eight, Miss Wilson can't turn her head. She has. Uh, a stiff neck. A stiff neck. Very a. good. A stiff neck. Yes. A stiff neck. Number nine, my brother can't mm -hmm. talk today. He has a sore throat. Very good. He has a sore throat. And number 10, the baby sounds very sick. He has a, a cough. A cough. Very good. Now, this last one is when you play the CD. Mm. And you listen and complete this postcard. I can tell you what the answers are. Because again, I'm having trouble with the CD that's in my workbook. Um, so we'll complete the postcard. Dear Grandma, we are on vacation this week. Last weekend, we went camping at a state park. We did not have a good time. Dad cooked on the campfire every night. The food was really bad. Dad had heartburn, and I had an upset stomach. So you're going to write in there an upset stomach, and that's like on number nine in your book. Mm -hmm. I had an upset stomach. On Saturday, it rained all day. Mom got sick. She had a sore throat. A sore throat is... Um, number two in your book, mm -hmm. and a cough, which is number three. So mom had a sore throat and a cough. On Sunday, Janet and I went swimming. Janet got water in her ear. Now she has an earache, number eight. Now she has mm -hmm. an earache. Then dad and I went hiking. Now I have a rash on my arms, number six, a rash. Now I have a rash on my arms and legs. This morning we went to a hotel. No more camping for us. Love, Marie. <laughs> I think she had all the fun she could stand, didn't she? <clears throat> Do you like to go camping, Christine? No. No? <laughs> No, I do. I really enjoy we, it. We we didn't go before, right? I I didn't try. So, so I never, don't know what is the camping. No, you've no. never been camping? Yes. Oh my goodness! I like to go to camp. I take kids oh, to camp you? every summer. I love oh. going to camp. When my son was little, I took him every summer. And now that he's grown up, I take other people's kids and go every summer. Oh, really? I really enjoy Where camping. are you going for camping? Um, I go up, do you, you know where Gallatin is? Uh -huh. we, I, we go through Gallatin over into Sumner County and go to Boxwell Reservation. It's a scout camp. Uh -huh. And it's called Boxwell Reservation. And it's right on Old Hickory Lake. It's a beautiful place. Oh, really? And we go camping there in the summertime. Um, mm -hmm. We have camped in cold weather and rainy weather, yes. but I prefer camping in the summer when it's hot. The summer, yes. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to go over to lesson two. Mm -hmm. Make a doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. uh, listening and speaking. So before you listen, look at the pictures and read the symptoms. So let's look at these pictures in your book. Mm -hmm. Number one, she's dizzy. Number two, he's nauseous. Number three, it's itchy. And number four, it's swollen. Mm -hmm. So those are the, the thing, the symptoms. Symptoms are what you feel, okay? Mm -hmm. So symptoms means it's what you actually feel. I feel dizzy, I'm disoriented. It feels like the room is going around in circles. So that's being dizzy. Yeah. The room 
it feels like the room is spinning. He's nauseous. He has an upset stomach. It's itchy like a rash, like poison ivy or something like that. Yeah. And the last one, it's swollen. So he probably sprained his ankle or something. Okay, yeah. so being swollen is a, is a symptom. Yeah. Being itchy is a symptom. So when someone acts, asks you, what are the symptoms? It's, at, it's what you actually feel, okay? okay? Symptoms are what you actually feel. Um, so we're gonna listen to the, first let's look at this picture. This woman and this young man are yeah. talking on the phone. Where do you think they are? The young man, um, I think he, he says the symptoms, what he feels. Okay, he's at home. He doesn't feel good. Where's the woman? Where is she? Uh, the woman, she's in the doctor clinic. Well, she's in the office, right? Yes. It office. might be a clinic because there's files like a clinic. Mm -hmm. But that's obviously where she works. Yeah. Okay, so let's listen to the conversation. Okay. Is getting away. Track 33. Page 128. Listen. Exercises B, C, and D. Hello, Westview Clinic. Hi, this is Roberto Cruz. I need to make an appointment, please. All right. What's the matter? I have a fever, and I'm nauseous. Okay. Can you come on Tuesday morning? How about at 9? Yes, that's fine. All right. What's your name again? Roberto Cruz. Roberto Cruz. Okay, Mr. Cruz. We'll see you on Tuesday at 9. Okay. Thank you. So, he was calling the doctor's office because he was sick. Yes. Um, they say listen again. We can listen one more time. Okay. Let's look at the um, questions they ask you in uh, Part C. Yeah. In Part C, they say, what's the matter with Roberto and what his symptoms are? So let's yeah. listen one more time. Okay. Okay, maybe. Page 128. Listen. Exercises B, C, and D. Hello, Westview Clinic. Hi, this is Roberto Cruz. I need to make an appointment, please. All right. What's the matter? I have a fever, and I'm nauseous. Okay. Can you come on Tuesday morning? How about at 9? Yes, that's fine. All right. What's your name again? Roberto Cruz. Roberto Cruz. Okay, Mr. Cruz, we'll see you on Tuesday at 9. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so what were his symptoms? He has a fever and he is uh, nauseous. Very good. He's nauseous. So he has a fever and he's nauseous. All right, we're going to listen again and complete the information on the appointment card. So this time we're going to listen towards the end where she actually makes the appointment and uh -huh. fill in this appointment card, okay? Okay. Page 128. Listen. Exercises B, C, and D. Hello, Westview Clinic. Hi. This is Roberto Cruz. I need to make an appointment, please. All right. What's the matter? I have a fever, and I'm nauseous. Okay. Can you come on Tuesday morning? How about at 9? Yes, that's fine. All right. What's your name again? Roberto Cruz. Roberto Cruz. Okay, Mr. Cruz. We'll see you on Tuesday at 9. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so you put his name on the top line. 
Yes. And his name is Roberto Cruz. Cruz. Has an appointment on Tuesday. Tuesday. So you check Tuesday. Yes. They put a date. So you can put any date you want to because they didn't refer to a date on the CD. Mm -hmm. But it's at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. It's 9 a.m., yes. Yes. 9 a.m. on Tuesday. Okay, let's go over to, well, we're going to have to listen again. Go yes. over to the next page, page 129, is conversation. Mm -hmm. um, before we listen, look at the pronunciation watch in the upper right corner. Yeah. It says, we often link words together without a break when we speak. So this is one of the things when I was learning Spanish, I had to learn how to tell somebody to speak more slowly mm -hmm. because I could understand them if they slowed down and I could hear the words. So often people speak very quickly and their words kind of run together. Yeah. And it's difficult to understand if you're not familiar with that. So you might ask somebody to please slow down so that you can hear the words. And that's what they're talking about here. We often link words together without a break. So the things they're talking about here, I have a fever. You almost don't hear the word A in front of fever. I have a fever. You hear I have and fever but the word a is in there it's just doesn't have much emphasis so you don't uh -huh. hear it very clearly okay so we're going to listen to these sentences and notice how we link a consonant sound to a vowel sound so listen and and uh, i think we'll listen and then we'll repeat oh, yeah we're going to yes. listen and then we'll repeat Page 129, Conversation, Exercise A. Listen. I have a fever. Can I make an appointment? Can you come at 8? We close at noon on Friday. Okay, now Listen repeat, and repeat. Christine. I have a fever. I have a fever. I have a fever. Can I make an appointment? Can I make an appointment? Can I make an appointment? Come at eight. Okay. We, we close at noon, noon on Friday. We close at noon on Friday. We close at noon on Friday. Very good. All right. Um, now it says listen and repeat the conversation. So we're going to have a conversation in exercise B. And first we'll listen and then we'll repeat. So let's start with the uh, CD again. Page, page 129, conversation, exercise B. Listen. Hello, Westview Clinic. Hi, this is Roberto Cruz. I need to make an appointment, please. All right, what's the matter? I have a fever and I'm nauseous. Okay. Can you come on Tuesday morning? How about at 9? Yes, that's fine. Listen and repeat. So now repeat, Christine. Hello, okay. Westview Clinic. Hello, Westview Clinic. Hi, this is Roberto Cruz. Hi, this is Roberto Cruz. Hi, this is Roberto Cruz. I need to make an appointment, please. I need to make an appointment, please. I need to make an appointment, please. All right. What's the matter? All right. What's the matter? All right. What is the matter? I have a fever and I'm nauseous. I have a fever and I'm nauseous. I have a fever and I am nauseous. I am nauseous. Okay. Can you come on Tuesday morning? Okay. Can you come on Tuesday morning? Okay. Can you come on Tuesday morning? How about at 9? How about at 9? How about at 9? Yes, that's fine. Yes, that's fine. Yes, that's fine. 
Okay. The next part is the practice where we take words from the blue, green, red, and yellow blocks. Yes. Uh -huh. So you, you go ahead and, and write in a couple of words and we'll go through that little paragraph and we'll take turns. Okay. You want to go first? Yes, okay. Hello, with you planning. Hi, this is Elsa. I need to make an appointment, please. All right, what is the matter? I have a cough and my throat is swollen. Okay, can you come on Saturday? How about at noon? Yes, that's fine. Okay, now this time I'll go first and you go second. Okay. Hello, Westview Clinic. Hi, this is Christine. I need to make an appointment, please. All right, what's the matter? I have a headache and I am a dizzy. I am dizzy. Okay, can you come this afternoon? How about at three o'clock? Yes, that's fine. Very good. Okay, so that's how we make that into a, a conversation. Yeah. All right, let's go over to lesson three. We're going to make a doctor's appointment in mm -hmm. lesson three. Before we, um, well, let's look at these boxes at the top of the page. These are yeah. prepositions of time. So we're talking about prepositions of time. Like when you make an appointment, they're saying the day and you would say on a particular day at a particular time by a particular time or in an amount of time, like an hour. Okay, so if you look at the grammar watch, it says use on with a day or date. Yes. Use at with a specific time on the clock. Mm -hmm. Use by with a specific time in the future. Mm -hmm. Use in with an amount of time in the future. Mm -hmm with a month or a year or with the morning, afternoon or evening. Use from and to with a starting time and an ending time. Mm -hmm. So when they're giving hours, they'll have a from and a to. Mm -hmm. So let's go through this grammar box. I'll read it and you repeat after me. Okay, Christine? Okay, okay. Can you come on Tuesday morning? Can you come on Tuesday morning? Roberto's appointment is at 9 a.m. Roberto's appointment is at 9 a.m. A.m. Please get here by 5 o'clock today. Please get here by 5 o'clock today. I'm going to see the doctor in an hour. I'm going to see the doctor in an hour. The pharmacy is open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. The pharmacy is open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Very good. Okay, now they want you to underline the correct word and we're using those prepositions like in the grammar box. So okay. if you need to refer back, you can look up at that grammar box at the top of the page. Okay. Can you come at, so underline the word at, uh -huh. 9.15 on April 1st? Yeah. All right, you try number two. Okay. You need to get here uh, by five o'clock. Very good. By five o'clock. You need to get here by five o'clock. Number three. The clinic is open from uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Very good. It's open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Number four. The office is closed on Saturday and Sunday. Right. Number five. Uh, the doctor can see you in an hour. Very good. The doctor can see you in an hour. Number six. Dr. Evans has opening from 3.40 to 5 p.m. Okay, so he has openings 
from 3.40 to 5 p.m. And number seven? My appointment is uh, at 2.30 this afternoon. Yes, my appointment is at 2.30 this afternoon. Okay, now we're gonna complete the sentences, right? On, at, by, in, or from, and to. So it depends on how we use it, what prepositions we're gonna write in the blanks. And number one, the dentist has appointments available on June 6th and 7th. So we wrote mm -hmm. on in the blank. You wanna try number two? Yes. The doctor can call you back in a few minutes. Very good. Minutes. Number three. My my son's appointment is at 4.30 today. Very good. The Let's clinic see. has opening from uh, 3.30 to 5 tomorrow afternoon. Very good. From 3.30 to 5 tomorrow afternoon. The doctor's office closes uh, at noon from, for lunch. lunch. Very good. At noon. Very good. Number six. Can I come on Monday? Yes. Can I come on Monday? Number seven. The doctor wants to see you again in a week. Very good. In a week. Number eight. Uh, the drugstore is open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Very good. From 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Number nine. You need to call at 5 p.m. because the office closes then. Very good. By 5 p.m. And number 10. Uh, is the office open on Saturday? Very good. Is the office open on Saturdays? All right, let's go over to the practice on page 131. Look at the appointment card. In the upper right corner, there's an appointment card from mm -hmm. Dr. John Medeiros. Mm -hmm. And then answer these questions and complete the sentences with on, at, by, in, or from, and to. So there's information on that card that will answer all these questions. So the first one, what day is Elizabeth's appointment? It's the, it is on Wednesday. Very good. It is on Wednesday. So you write that in. It is on Wednesday. And number two, what time is her appointment? Uh, it is uh, at 10, it is October 6th at 10, 15 no, a.m. They didn't ask the date. They just okay. wanted to know the time. What is so the time? It is at 10, at 10 uh, 15 a.m. Yes, it's at 10, 15 a.m. It is at 10, 15 a.m. When is the doctor's office open? Now we have to look up at the top of the card for his hours. Yeah. When is the doctor's office open? It is open? It is open uh, from Monday to, to Friday from 8 uh, a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, so all you need to write there is from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. It is open from 8 to 5. Okay. It is open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. It is now 8.15 a.m. on October 6th. How uh -huh. soon is Elizabeth going to see the doctor? So now they want you to say how much time will pass between now and her appointment time. <coughs> so it is now 8.15 a.m. And it's the day of her appointment. So how soon will she see the doctor? No, I, I didn't understand this uh, question. It is now 8.15 a.m. on October 6th. Uh, so how soon is that? She's going to see him um, by, by two no. hours? In, in two in hours. In two hours? In, in two hours. Okay. She is going to see him in two hours, two hours from now. Her yes. appointment is two hours from now, but she will see him in two hours. Mm -hmm. okay. What time does Elizabeth need to arrive at the doctor's office? On the card, I think it tells you ten down minutes. at the very bottom. Yes. Please arrive at least 10 minutes before the time of your appointment. So what time does she need to arrive? 
she should be there at least 10 minutes before the time. Right, so what time will that be? She should be there by? By 10 minutes. By 10.05 a.m. She should be there by 10.05 a.m. Oh, okay. That's 10 minutes before her 10.15 appointment. So uh -huh. what you do is you take her 10.15 and you go back 10 minutes, 10.15, uh -huh. it would be 10.05. Yes, 10.05, okay. So she should be there by 10.05 a.m., okay? Yeah. Okay. Down at the bottom and show what you know, they've given you um, appointment cards telling you what kinds of appointments people have. Um, in my family, I have appointment cards that I keep on my calendar. Uh -huh. So when the doctor hands you an appointment card, I keep all of those on the calendar and I put them in order by date. And then after we have an appointment, I pull the card off and throw it away. So uh -huh. we have all these appointment cards in date order stuck on our calendar so we know what's coming up and when. Uh -huh. So that's what these are. These are appointment cards and they're telling you what person in the family has an appointment and who they have it with at what time. Okay. All right, let's go over uh, to the workbook again. So in the workbook, we're on page 76. Make a doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. Complete the conversation and underline the correct word. So in, the, in this conversation, the receptionist says, good morning, Dr. Quintana's office. And Carmen responds, hi, this is Carmen Ruiz. I have an appointment. What is she going to say? On Wednesday morning. On, on Wednesday morning. Very good. On Wednesday morning. Yes, Mrs. Ruiz, your appointment is what time? Uh, is at 1030. At 1030. Your appointment is at 1030. I need to change it. Can I come? Can I come in, um, in the afternoon? Very good. Can I come in the afternoon? I'm sorry, we don't make, we don't take appointments. On Wednesday afternoon. Very good. On Wednesday afternoons. Our office closes. At one o'clock. Very good. It closes at one o'clock. Can I come this afternoon? Well, we're closed for lunch. Uh, from 12 to 1. Very good. From 12 um, to 1. But let me see here. Um, I have an opening. Uh, in an hour. In an hour. I have an opening in an hour. Can you get here? Uh, by 11. Right. Can you get here by 11 o'clock? Yes. Mm -hmm. My office is very close. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll change your appointment to today at 11 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to complete the paragraph at the bottom and we're going to write at, by, in, on, or from, and to, depending on mm -hmm. what we need in the blanks in this paragraph. Suzanne has a dentist appointment on January 5th at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Suzanne arrives at 8.02, but the dentist is not ready to see her. His office is always busy. The receptionist says, please have a seat. We will call you uh, in a few minutes. In a few minutes. We will call you in a few minutes. But Suzanne sits in the waiting room from 8 o'clock to 8.30. From 8 o'clock to 8.30. She's a little worried. She starts work at 9.30. At 9.30. She needs to leave the dentist's office uh, at 9.15. By, by 9.15. By 
She yeah. needs to leave the office by 9.15 or she will be late. Mm -hmm. Finally, the dental assistant calls her name. After her appointment, Suzanne makes her next appointment. Her next appointment is... Uh, is uh, at six months? In. in six months. Her appointment is mm -hmm. in, in six yeah. months. Her appointment is in six months and it is on a saturday very good it is on a saturday morning so she doesn't morning. have to worry about being late for work so she made her next appointment for saturday so that it wouldn't interfere with her work schedule okay so now we're going to go over to exercise c on page 77 read the appointment card and then answer the questions and then write complete sentences so they don't want you to just give a time or a day they want you to write a complete sentence. Uh -huh. So we're going to start with number one. Yeah. What day of the week is the patient's appointment? The appointment is on Thursday. Yeah. Thursday is the day of the week. So they wrote yes. a complete sentence. The appointment is on Thursday. So number two says, what is the date of the appointment? So what are we going to say for that sentence? A oh, complete sentence. <clears throat> So uh, the appointment, the appointment, the appointment is, is in November 19. The appointment is on. The appointment is, is on. On November. November 19. The appointment yes. is on November 19. Yes, okay. What is on the doctor's? The, with the date and the date, right? No, you don't on mean the date. They just wanted to, oh, they did say that, yes, November the 19th is the date. Yes, date so, and days on, we booked on before. You just need the date. They want to know the date. What day is it on? It is on November 19th. Okay. You don't need the time for that one, okay? Yes. The date is November 19th. The appointment is mm -hmm. on November 19th. On November. Yes. Number three, what is the doctor's name? The doctor's name is um, is uh, is downtown health food. No. Doctor Bernard. Yes, Doctor Bernard. Yes. Okay. So the doctor's name is. So you're gonna doctor. write the doctor's name is. Bernard. Doctor Bernard. Doctor Bernard. What is the phone number of the clinic? The phone number is, you have to write a sentence. Yes, it's the phone three number three, is 313-555-1234. So the phone number is 313-555-1234. Mm -hmm. What street is the clinic on? What street is the clinic on? The okay. clinic is clinic on. Is... You have to write a complete sentence. The clinic is on what street? Uh, is on uh, Central Street. Very good. The clinic is on Central Street. When does the clinic open on Mondays? Uh, it's open from seven o'clock, seven a.m. clock, five p.m. Okay, so the clinic is open. From seven a.m. Oh, okay. From so seven they just, to know, they just want to know about Mondays. So you could say the clinic opens. The clinic mm -hmm. opens at 7 a.m. on oh. Mondays. The clinic opens oh, okay. at 7 a.m. on Mondays. Okay, and then the next one says, what time does the clinic close on Saturdays? 
So we're going to say the clinic closes at Uh, what time does the clinic close? 5 p.m. The clinic closes at 5 p.m. on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. The clinic closes at 5 p.m. on Saturdays. So now we're looking at that appointment card again. Mm -hmm. So looking at that appointment card again, number eight, imagine it is now 3.20 p.m. on November 19th. How soon is the patient's appointment at the clinic? It's 3.20 now. The appointment is at 3.45. So how much time do we have before the appointment? How soon is the patient's appointment? The appointment is in uh, 3.45. How many minutes? How many minutes from now? So he should to be uh, 5.15 minutes. The clinic is in 25 minutes. Right, 25 minutes from now. It's 3.20. In 25 minutes, it'll be 345. So the appointment is in 25 minutes. When they say how mm -hmm. soon, they want to know how much time between now and then. So the appointment is in 25 minutes. 25. <clears throat> Number nine, the patient has never been to the clinic before. What time should he arrive at the clinic? What does it say on the card? New patients, please arrive. The, please arrive 20 minutes before appointment time. Right. So if he's a new, new patient, he's never been to the clinic before. If his appointment is at 345, what time does he need to arrive? He needs to arrive. At the... By... He needs to arrive by what time? Uh, is that by 325? Very good, by 325. 20 minutes before, he needs to arrive by 325. Very good. He needs to arrive by 325. Okay, let's go back to the big book. Read medicine labels. In the in that um, number one, it says read. It says OTC medicine labels. OTC means over the counter. Okay, so where you say, see, over read OTC, that means read over the counter medicine labels. So over the counter medicine labels means okay. medicines that do not require a prescription. Okay, that's what over the counter is. Okay. OTC stands for over the okay. counter. And those are medicines that do not require a prescription from the doctor. You can just go into the drugstore and buy those off the shelf. So yes. what over-the-counter medicines do you buy? Do you buy medicines in the in the drugstore or in the pharmacy section of the store about um, over-the-counter? Do you buy some yes. of those? What do you buy? Yes. Uh, I buy some medicine for a fever for my kids, like a Tylenol. Okay, Tylenol. That's one that we buy. We buy Tylenol, sometimes ibuprofen. So things yes, like that that you can buy over the counter. Uh, my yes. brother buys cough syrup. He buys cough syrup over the counter. Yes. So if you have a cough, you can get cough syrup like Robitussin or something like that. So okay. you can buy over the counter OTC medicine such as aspirin from any drugstore. 
For other medicine, you need to get a prescription from a doctor first. But we're talking mm -hmm. about over-the-counter medicines here, but other medicines would require a prescription from the doctor. Like antibiotics would require a prescription from the doctor. Okay, so it says read the definitions, then read the medicine label. <clears throat> Find words that have the same meaning as the definitions and write the words on the lines. Mm -hmm. For a short time, so when it's mm -hmm. for a short time, it means temporarily. So we're looking at this label for acetaminophen and acetaminophen is Tylenol, okay? Acetaminophen mm -hmm. is the generic name for Tylenol. And mm -hmm. you're reading this label about acetaminophen and when you, where you see the word it temporarily, mm -hmm. that means for a short time. So number one says mm -hmm. for a short time, the answer is temporarily. Mm -hmm. So this medicine temporarily relieves the aches and pains due to headaches, a common cold, backache, toothache, and temporarily reduces fever. So number two, where it says relieve, it means to make better. So number two says make better. And the word they're looking for there is relieve. Okay, relieve. or release. In the, where on the words? I'm sorry? Where can I find? Oh, uh, yeah, where can I find this word? Okay, we're looking at the label in the middle of the page. The uh, yellow box with the red yeah. square and the words in that box. Yeah. At the top, it says extra strength pain reliever. Active ingredients is acetaminophen, 500 mm -hmm. milligrams. Acetaminophen is another word for Tylenol. Yes. So acetaminophen, 500 milligrams. And the uses for acetaminophen, it temporarily relieves the aches and pains due to headache, common cold, backache, toothache, and temporarily reduces fever. And then it mm -hmm. gives you the directions. Adults and children 12 years and over take two caplets every six hours, do not take more than eight and 24 hours, and children under 12 do not use this product, okay? Yeah. And the expiration date they gave you at the bottom is 1110. Yeah, so okay. we're going back up here to letter B again. Number one was for a short time and that was temporarily because that's on yeah. the label. We're getting the words from the label, okay? Yeah. okay. And to make better means to relieve. Release. On the label, it says it temporarily relieves. So we're looking for relieve. Number two is relieve. Number three, it's asking you because of, and the word on the label is due to, D-U-E-T-O. Because of is due to. Mm -hmm. Number four says make less. The word on the label that they use me is reduce. So it will reduce. temporarily reduce fever. So mm -hmm. make less, it will make the fever less. That means reduce. To make mm -hmm. less is to reduce. Do not use after this date. What's the date? Expiration date. The, the words for the date are the expiration date. Yes, expiration date. And that's right at the bottom the expiration date. So do not use after this date. They want you to put expiration date, okay? Letter C down at the bottom of the page says read the label again and match the questions and answers. So we're still using this same label, label in the middle of the page. Uh -huh. Number one says, what is this medicine for? Uh, is B? B is a boy. What is this medicine for? B. I don't know where those come from. Eggs and beans. Oh, over here and on the right hand side. Okay. Number one says, what is the medicine for? Letter B says aches and pains and fever. And fever. So letter B says aches and pains and fever. So this medicine is for aches and pains and fever. And that's letter B. Yeah. Number two says, who can take this medicine? Uh, adults and children over 12. Very good. So what letter is that? 
E. E. So we're going to put E. How much do I take? Uh, two uh, tablets. Yes. Tablets. Yes. Is really six hours. Very good. C or T. C. Letter C. Two caplets every six hours. Okay. Letter C. Yes. Who cannot use this product? Uh, children under 12. Very good. Letter D. Letter D. Letter D. Children under 12 cannot use this product. And what is the expiration date? The November uh, 2010. November 2010. Very good. Letter A. So the last one was letter A, November 2010. That, that shows that this book is dated. This book is like 10 years old. Okay, we're going to go over to page 133. Read uh -huh. prescription medicine labels. Uh -huh. um, letter A says, look at the prescription and the medicine label and answer the questions. <clears throat> so this time the doctor is giving them a medicine that requires a prescription. They don't yeah. write prescriptions on paper like this anymore. Most pharmacies, if you go to the doctor, the doctor will email mm -hmm. the information to the pharmacy. The pharmacy will fill it and give you the medicine. They don't usually write prescriptions on a piece of paper anymore. Yes. Um, that's very rare now to get a prescription written on a piece of paper. So. Uh, but if you did get one written on a piece of paper, this is probably what it would look like. Okay. Um, so they want you to look at this and the medicine label next to it. So this was the prescription that the doctor wrote. Uh -huh. And this is the medicine that the pharmacy gave you. So they want you to look at both of these, the prescription and the label on the medicine. And then answer these questions. So who wrote this prescription? What doctor wrote this prescription? Uh, Dr. Uh, Loria. Leora, Leora Fishman. Fishman. Leora Fishman, that's right. Dr. Leora Fishman. And her name is right at the very top of that prescription. Mm -hmm. Dr. Leora Fishman. So you can copy that down. That's the answer. She wrote the prescription. Yes. Who is the prescription for? It's What's the for Keith Reed. Kate Reed, very good. It's for the patient, Kate Reed. Very good, Kate Reed. Who do you give a prescription to? Uh, to the pharmacist. Who do you give the medicine to? Or the prescription, who do you give it to? to you give it to a patient. To a, patient. a patient. In this case, it would be Kate Reed, but you're giving the prescription to the patient. So you give a prescription to a patient. To a patient. And they don't really do that anymore. Most, most of them now they do them uh, electronically. Where can you get this medicine? Where do you go to the, get this medicine? At the pharmacy. At the pharmacy. Very good. At a pharmacy or a drugstore. You go to a pharmacy or a drugstore. What information is on the label? What are the, the names of the information that's on the label? They have the doctor's name on the label. What else is on the label? The doctor's name. The, uh, patient, the, patient name. the patient's name. And the dosage. 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 D-O-S-A-G-E. The, the dosage. Warning. And a warning. Yeah. And the and name of the medicine, expiration. the medicine name, what else yeah. is on that label? How many refills? Yeah. And the last one the is date. an expiration, expiration date. Very good. So on that label, you have the doctor, patient, dosage, warning, medicine name, refills and the expiration date. So there's a lot of information on that label. Now they want us to use that yeah. same label again in this on this bottle at the top of the page. So we're looking at this bottle at the top of the page again. It's the name of the ph pharmacy name. What is the name of the pharmacy? What's the no well, first the first question was what is the name of the medicine? What is the name of the medicine? What's the name of the medicine? 
Look over here on the to the right, A, B, C, D, E. Which one of those is the name of the medicine? Mm -hmm. Okay. The name of it's a milikilim. Milikam. Milikam, and it's letter E. So yes. number one is letter E. The name of the medicine is Milikam. Number two, how often do I take it? Two tablets, spoons, tea. You take it once a day. Once okay. a day. Yes, once a day. Yes. What is the dosage of the medicine? It's little P. Two, e, two tablespoons. Two tablespoons, letter B. And number four, what is the expiration date? October uh, 2012. Very good, October 2012. And how many refills can I get? Two. Two, two refills, letter A, two. Now, number three, near the bottom of the page, says take turns being the customer and the pharmacist, ask and answer questions about the prescription medicine. So we're going to ask and answer questions about these prescription medicines that you see down here at the bottom of the page. The one on the left side, who is it for? Who is this medicine for on the left side of the page? Which and exercise? What's the patient's name? Where, where we are? It's three. We are in this, uh, number three. They're five, asking five, who is... Who is the medicine for? Who is the medicine for? That's the name of the patient. So what is the name of the patient? These two um, labels down at the bottom of the page. For Biomed Pharmacy, there's two labels down at the bottom of the page. You see those? Mm -hmm. That's what we're using to answer these questions. So just looking at that picture of that label, who is this medicine for? Yes. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, let's look. Well, you're on page 133, right? At the yes. bottom of the page. Yes. Under practice. You see where it says three practice? Yes. And it has two labels down there at the bottom of the page. The one on the left mm -hmm. says Biomed Pharmacy, Dr. Mark Smith, patient dosage warning. Yes. Name. You see yes. all of that down at the bottom? The patient's still late. So we're just looking at that first label now. Mm -hmm. And it says the patient is Bill Lake. Bill Lake. Bill Lake. So this medicine is for it's Bill for the Lake. Lake. Okay. Who is the doctor who wrote this prescription? Uh, Dr. Mark Smith. Very good. Dr. Mark Smith wrote this prescription. Um, and what's the name of this medicine? Is polymazin the eye uh, drops? One drop in each eye every four to six hours for seven days. So these are eye drops, they eye go drop. in your eyes. Yes, they're eye drops, and you should put one in each eye every four to six hours for seven days. Um, What's the warning on this prescription? Warning is for the eyes only. Very good. And the name of this medicine? Polymazin B eye drops. Polymazin B eye drops. Are there any refills on this medication? No. No refills. And when does it expire? Uh, in uh, On August um, uh, 2011. August 12th, 2011. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's look at the label to, on the right. Who is this medicine for on the right? It's for the patient. And what is her name? It's May Yusan. My Yusan. My Yusan. Yes. And who is the doctor who wrote this prescription? Paul Jones. Very good. Dr. Paul, Paul Jones. Jones. Paul Jones wrote this prescription for. Me, you, you said. All right, let's look at the next thing. Um, what kind of medicine is this? Uh, it's a, it's a 
skin. It's a Bactobane ointment. It's an ointment, so it probably goes on some kind of a wound. When, um, when I got bit by my cat, the doctor gave me a medicine that would heal it from the inside out. Uh -huh. You could know, put something on it that heals it from the outside, but she wanted it to heal from the inside so the infection would come out of it. Uh -huh. So she gave me a special ointment that would heal it from the inside out. Okay, they want you to complete a medical history form. Let's just look at it on page 262. Uh -huh. If you went into a doctor for the first time, they would probably ask you to fill out something like this, where you give all your information and things you might be allergic to and all this information. And you fill all that out one time for your doctor so they have it on file. Okay? Okay. We're not going to do that right now, but have you ever filled one of these out, Christine? I'm sorry? Have you ever had to fill out one of these forms or something yes. like this? So yes. when you first take your children to a new doctor or you yes. go to a new doctor, you fill that out the first time you go. You yes. generally only have to do that one time. Yes. You generally don't have to do that when you go back. All right, that's lesson four. Let's look at the book at the workbook now. The workbook has, um, and these are going to be very similar pages to what we just did. We're going to start with uh, words and definitions. Mm -hmm. It says, read the definitions and match the definitions with the words from the box. So yeah. they've got the words up here at the top and the definitions down below. Yeah, so okay. who is the person who sees a doctor for medical help? What's the word they use? Patient. The patient, the patient. patient. So you use the word patient there. Okay. The day you should throw away medicine. What day is expiration that? Expiration date. Expiration date. Very good. The expiration date. Um, number three, medicine you can buy without an order from a doctor. The over the counter. Very good. Over the counter medicine, OTC. So if you ever see that OTC, you know that means over the counter. Over Something the counter. you can go in and buy right off the shelf, okay? Yeah, um, number four, an order for medicine from a doctor. When it requires the doctor to write something, what is that called? A prescription. Very good, a prescription. An order for medicine from a doctor is a prescription. Number five, the amount of medicine you take and when you take it. Uh, it's dosage. It's called the dosage. Dosage, yeah. The dosage. The amount of the medicine you take. Was, I don't know if that's it. up there. What is Yeah, the dosage. It's that first yeah. word in the box, dosage, D-O-S-A-G-E, dosage. That means the amount of medicine you take and when you take it. It's called mm -hmm. the dosage. Yes. Number six, the number of times you can get more medicine. Uh, refill. Refill, very good, refill. Um, information about a danger, what do they call that? Warning. Warning, very good, they call that a warning. <clears throat> Let's go down to part B, read the medicine label. There's a medicine label here to the right for upset stomach relief, you see that? That's yes. what we're gonna to use to answer these questions. Yes. Read the medicine label, then read the statements and circle true or false. So they're gonna give you statements and you need to say whether the statements are true or false. Yeah. Take this medicine for a headache. It's false. False, this is for upset stomach. This is not yes. for a headache. Yes. Number two, take two tablets every hour. Yes, true. True, very good, true. Take two tablets every hour as needed. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, number three, don't take more than two tablets in one day. It's four, false, it's eight false. tablets in one day. False, it says two every two hours as needed. So you can take more than two in one day. Yes. Children age 12 and older can take this medicine. Mm -hmm. True. True. Children under 12 should not take it, but children 12 and older can take this medicine. Yeah. 
You must not use this medicine after. Number five. I'm on number five. Is it true or false? Yes, it's false. False, very good. The expiration date is January 2011, January. not yes. July 2012. Yes. So that one was false. All right, let's go up to the top of page 79. Mm -hmm. Read the prescription medicine label and answer the questions. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at this prescription label just to the right of these sentences, okay? Mm -hmm. And this looks like it may be some kind of drops, eye drops. These eye are drops. eye drops, okay? Yeah. So who is this prescription for? What's the patient's name? Sarah. Uh, Carl Carl Carlton. Sarah Carlton. Sarah Carlton. That's who this medicine is for. Mm -hmm. What part of the body is the medicine for? It's for eyes. 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 It's for the eyes. How much medicine does Sarah take? Mm -hmm. How much? How much is the How much? Yes, I'm sorry. It's um it's every uh four to six hours for four days. Okay, four but days. the the amount how much is four, four drops. The amount is how much is four drops. Four drops. Four drops. So each time she uses it, she uses four drops. drops. Okay. It says put four drops in each eye. Mm -hmm. so the amount of medicine is four drops. Yeah, okay. Number four, how often does she take the medicine? Uh, every four to six hours. Very good. Every four to six hours. And number five, how many refills can she get? No refills. None, zero. And number six, what is the expiration date? Uh, it's March uh, 25th, 2015, 2015. 3-25-2013. It's hard to read. 2013, 325, 2013. Okay, now they have to play a track. And again, like my, I don't know why my CD doesn't work very well, but we're going to, I'll go over these with you. Okay. Listen to a customer talking to a pharmacist and complete the conversation with the words you hear. So here's the conversation. Mr. Bronson, your prescription is ready. Is this the first time you are taking taking naproxen? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. How much do I take? Take two tablets. Okay. We'll put a two in there. Mm -hmm. Take two tablets three times a day. Three times a day. Mm -hmm. Do I take them with food? So the answer there is food. Do I take them with food? Mm -hmm. Yes, take the tablets at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And how long do I take them? 10 days. So there under pharmacist, you're going to write 10 days. Mm -hmm. All right, this medicine can make you feel dizzy or nauseous. Remember we talked about dizzy in our yeah. book? Okay. We talked about dizzy, D-I-Z-Z-Y, dizzy. This medicine can make you feel dizzy or nauseous. Mm -hmm. If this happens, stop taking the medicine and call your doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you understand these directions? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's go back to the big book. And we'll do lesson five. 
and we're going to listen to the CD. I can listen to this CD just fine. I don't know why I'm having trouble with the one on the workbook. Look at the pictures. Match each picture with a sentence from the box and write the sentences on the lines. So before we listen to the CD, they want us to look at these pictures uh -huh. and match what happened in the picture to the sentences in the box. Okay. So number one, she fell. I yeah. fell. If you I look fell. over there, you see I fell. And that's what yeah. they were underneath that picture. I fell. Mm -hmm. Number two, what do you uh, think you I, did? I broke my arm. Very good. I broke my arm. He's got it in a cast. I broke my arm. And number three? I cut my finger. Very good. I cut my finger. Number three, I cut my finger. Number four? I sprained my ankle. Very good. I sprained my ankle. And number five? Um, I hurt my head. I hurt my head. I hurt my head. That's number five. I hurt my head. And number six? I burned my hand. Very good. I burned my hand. Number six is I burned my hand. Very good. Um, they want us to look at this picture to the right. This is Manolo and Ellie. Where are they in this picture? Can you tell where they are in this picture? Uh, they are in the hospital. I think they're in the hospital in the emergency room. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're going to uh, listen to the CD uh -huh. and then we're going to circle true or false. So these uh, questions over here are Ellie broke her arm. Ellie had an accident at a soccer game and Manolo thinks he sprained his ankle. So we're going to listen to the CD and then we're going to mark these sentences true or false. Okay. So let me go back to the CD. Share screen. This is track 37. Page 134. Listen. Exercise B. Hi, Ellie. What are you doing here? Oh, hi, Manolo. I had an accident. I broke my arm. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks. What about you? I hurt my ankle at a soccer game. I think I sprained it. That's too bad. Okay. So, Ellie broke her arm. Is that true or false? Uh-huh. It's uh, true. True, very good. Ellie had an accident at a soccer game? False. False. Manolo thinks he sprained his ankle? Yes, true. True, very good. All right, we're going to listen to the next track, and this is the whole conversation, and we're going to find out how Manolo got hurt. Okay. Page 134. Listen. Exercise B. Hi, Ellie. What are you doing here? Oh, hi, Manolo. I had an accident. I broke my arm. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks. What about you? I hurt my ankle at a soccer game. I think I sprained it. That's too bad. Okay, so what happened to Manolo? Uh, he sprained his ankle at a soccer game. At the soccer game. Okay, a. so it's going to be letter B as in boy, but I think there's more to it than that. B or A? I think we're going to listen to some more. Listen to the sentences. Notice the pronunciation. Okay, that's yeah. okay. So Manolo was at the soccer game. Did he break his? Did he sprain his ankle playing soccer? Yeah. No, he didn't sprain it playing soccer. He sprained it going down the, the steps. The steps? Well, he didn't say. Oh, I think we have to listen to another track. I'm yes. sorry. Okay. Oh, track 38. 
Page 134. Listen. Exercise C. Hi, Ellie. What are you doing here? Oh, hi, Manolo. I had an accident. I broke my arm. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks. What about you? I hurt my ankle at a soccer game. I think I sprained it. That's too bad. I guess you can't play soccer for a while. Oh, I don't play soccer. I just watch. What? So, how did you hurt your ankle? Well, I was at a soccer game. I was hungry, so I got some food. I had a drink and a sandwich in my hands, and I fell down the stairs on the way to my seat. Okay, so. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> This is letter B. Page 134. Okay, so that was letter B. Yes. He、um, sprained his ankle going down the stairs. All right, we're going to go over to page 135. Yeah. And we're going to listen again. Here we go again, right? Listen to the sentences. Before we do that, look at the pronunciation watch box over on the right. When the letter T is between two vowel sounds, it often sounds like a quick D in North American English.、Mm -hmm. So the letter T, when it's between two vowels, can have a D sound rather than a T sound.、Mm -hmm. So, we're going to do these sentences and listen to the pronunciation of the T's, and then we're going to listen and repeat. So, let's、okay. do this next track. Page 135 Conversation Exercise A Listen. What are you doing here? I was at a soccer game. What's the matter? We're going to repeat. Listen、now. and repeat. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I was at a soccer game. I was at a soccer game. What's the matter? What's the matter? Okay, you see how they sometimes have a d sound? Yes. Rather than a t sound, sometimes it has a d sound. All right, we're going to listen to some more sentences. And this time they want you to、um, look, listen for the underlying T's and which ones have the D sound, like a D, and、yeah. circle the number on the ones that have the D sound. So we're, they've got them underlined in your book to show you what you're listening for. Yes. And then we're going to circle the ones that have the D sound. Now, remember, it said the dust sound is usually when it's between two vowels. So that's a clue. Yes. You see a vowel before and after the T, that's a real good clue as to when it's going to have that dust sound. So、okay. let's listen and then circle the letters where you hear that dust sound. Page 135, Conversation. Exercise B. One. What about you? Two. I hurt my ankle. Three. That's too bad. Four. See you later. I'm going to play that again, Christine. Yes, okay. Page 135. Conversation. Exercise A. Listen. A. What are you doing here? Well, let me go back. Page 135. Conversation. Exercise B. One. What about you? Okay. What about you? Is that got the D sound or the T sound? It's D, D sound. D, a D sound. It's between、That's、two vowels. So we're going to circle number one.、Yeah. So circle number one. Now let's listen to number two.、Yeah. Two. I hurt my ankle. It's T, T sound. It has the T sound, the hard T. We're、oh. not going to circle number two. Yes. Okay, let's listen to number three. Three. That's too bad. Four. So that's too bad. Does that have a D sound、yeah. or a T sound? T sound. A T sound. So we're not going to circle number three. All right, let's listen to number four. 
See you later. See you later. It's da, da. A da sound. sound, that's right. Very good. That has the da sound. See you later. Because it's between an A and an E, it's yes. got a da sound. See you Very yes. good. And right, we're going to go on to exercise C. Mm -hmm. Page 135, Conversation, Exercise C. Listen. Hi, Ellie. What are you doing here? Oh, hi, Manolo. I had an accident. I broke my arm. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks. What about you? I hurt my ankle at a soccer game. I think I sprained it. That's too bad. Okay, now we're going to repeat, Christine. Yes. Listen and repeat. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Oh, hi, Manolo. Oh, hi, Manolo. Oh, hi, Manolo. I had an accident. I broke my arm. I had an accident. I broke my arm. Oh, no. I'm sorry oh. to hear that. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks. What about you? Thanks. What about you? I hurt my ankle at a soccer game. I hurt my, I ankle. Hurt my ankle at a soccer game. I think I sprained it. I think I sprained it. That's too bad. That's too bad. Okay. Page one. Okay. So now it has a, a practice down at the bottom where we um, use the blue and green words in the mm -hmm. box. So practice the conversation. Okay. Um, you can start and then I'll do the I'll do it the second time. So you start with letter okay. A and I'll read B. Yeah, okay. Hi Miss Elsa. Uh, what are you doing here? Oh hi Christine. I cut my hand. I had an accident. Oh I oh, cut my hand. Okay. Yeah. I cut my oh, hand. Oh no, I am sorry to hear that. Thanks. What about you? I hurt my foot at the soccer game. I think I sprayed it. Sprayed it. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, so this time I'll start. Hi, Christine. What are you doing here? Oh, hi, Miss Elsa. I had an accent. I burned my finger. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks. What about you? I hurt my wrist at a soccer game. I think I sprained it. That's too bad. Very good. Yes. Okay, so let's go on and do lesson six. Lesson six has a grammar box at the top of the page. And grammar boxes are a real good way to get the proper usage of um, words. So we're going to use this. This is a simple past of irregular verbs. In the affirmative, I'll read these and then you repeat after me. Uh -huh. Ellie had an accident. Ellie had an accident. She broke her arm. She broke her arm. Manolo got hurt. Manolo got hurt. He hurt his ankle. He hurt his ankle. If you look in this box to the right, these are common irregular verbs. Now, irregular verbs means we're going to use these differently than we normally use them, okay? Mm -hmm. So in this, the words that they're using, break, the mm -hmm. past tense form is broke. Mm -hmm. Cut, the past tense form is cut. Fall, the past tense is fell. Mm -hmm. Get, past tense is got. Have, past tense is had. Yes. 
and hurt in the past tense is hurt. So sometimes it stays exactly the same depending on the word. But these are irregular. They're not, they don't follow any rules. Yes. Okay, so number one, practice. Complete the sentences. Underline the correct verbs. So number one says, I don't want my son to play soccer. Sometimes players get hurt. Sometimes players get hurt. Mm -hmm. Now that's in the present tense. They're talking about right now. Yes. Sometimes players get yes. hurt. Number two, oh no. You want to try number two? Yes. Oh no, I think I, think I broke my leg. Yes, I think I broke, I think I broke my broke. leg because it's past tense. I think yes. I broke my leg. It's past tense. I think I broke my leg. Number three, Pilar. Pilar cut her finger and went to the hospital. Pilar cut her finger and went to the hospital. She may have needed stitches, right? Yes. She cut her finger and went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Number four. He hurt his ankle on the stairs yesterday. Very good. He hurt his ankle on the stairs yesterday. He hurt his ankle on the stairs yesterday. Number five, my grandfather. My, my grandfather sometimes uh, fell in the house. Falls. Falls. This is Falls. in the present tense. My grandfather sometimes falls in the house. Mm -hmm. This happens with my brother here with me. Falls in the house. I'm worried. When they take a lot of falls like that, you worry about them getting hurt very seriously. So you have to really watch. Mm -hmm. Number six. Uh, they had an accident last Saturday. Very good. It was last Saturday, so it's in the past. They had an accident last Saturday. Yes, they had an accident last Saturday. Number seven. My son broke his food and, and went to the emergency uh, room. Very good. My son broke his foot and went to the emergency room. My son broke his foot mm -hmm. and went to the emergency room. Number eight. My daughter is sick today. Uh, she has a sore throat. Very good. My daughter is sick today. She has a sore throat. She has a sore throat because that's right now in the present tense. The present, yes. She has a sore throat. Exercise B says write sentences about the past mm -hmm. and use a verb from the box. Yeah. So we're going to write sentences down here in part B and use the verbs that they gave you in the box. Number one, Oscar broke his ankle. Mm -hmm. Oscar broke his ankle and they did that one for you. You want to try number two? Yes, please. My son uh, cut his his finger with a knife. Very good. My son cut his finger with a knife. My son cut his finger with a knife. Number three. You had a fever last night. Very good. You had a fever last night because it's last night. It's in the yes. past tense. You had a fever last night. Number four. Uh, we uh, we got we get the sick. We got sick. We got we got, got sick. In the past tense, we got sick. Number five. My grandmother uh, falls in the bathroom. Yes. My grandmother fell in the bathroom. My grandmother fell in the bathroom. Number six, Sun Ah. Sun Ah uh, hurt her arm. Very good. Sun Ah hurt her arm. Yes. Number seven. Uh, 
her arm. Hurt is the same past and present. Present mm -hmm. soon ah, hurt her arm. Let's go over to the practice on page 137. Look at the pictures. What happened? These all happened last weekend. So they're all going to be in the past. Mm -hmm. So you can use those grammar boxes and those verb uh, tenses on the previous page to, to help you with the, the word and how to use the word. Yes. So the first one is Jessica. Jessica oh. had an accident in the kitchen. What did she do? She cut her, uh, her hand. Yes, she cut her hand. Yes. She cut her hand. Um, number two, David. David, um, David's son, he had a dizzy. He uh, got dizzy. He got dizzy. He got dizzy and he fell on the ice. Yes. He got dizzy and he fell on the ice. Mm -hmm. Number three. Emily. Uh, Emily broke his, his ankle. Yes. Emery broke his ankle. Mm -hmm. Emery broke his ankle and now he's on crutches. Mm -hmm. Emery broke his ankle. And number four, Denise. Denise had a fever. Yes. Denise has a fever or had a fever. It's last had week. Fever. She had a fever, past tense. So they're talking about injuries. Have you ever had an accident where you got hurt, Christine? Mm, no, thank you. No, thank you. No. Um, a few years ago, I was camping at Boxwell, and I fell and broke my arm. Oh, I fell and broke my arm while we were camping. So I was in a cast. In fact, that was the same year that my husband and I traveled to Israel, mm -hmm. and I had to travel out of the country with a cast on my arm. Oh, God. So I, I, was, I had broken my arm, and that's the first time I had ever broken a bone. Mm -hmm. I broke my arm. It's too bad. Yeah. I wore a cast for six yeah. or eight weeks, however long I had to wear it. Uh -huh. So, um, but I don't usually have broken bones. Um, let's look at our workbook. Mm -hmm. Lesson five and six talk about an injury. Mm -hmm. um, complete the sentences. Use the past tense of forms of the verbs in parentheses. So you might want to refer back to your book, to those boxes at the top of the page in your book. Yes. Oscar, and they're going to use the past tense of the verb yes. get. Oscar got hurt during a baseball game. Yes. Oscar yes. got hurt. During, the During a baseball game. Do you want to try number two? Yes, please. The new cop cut her hand with a knife yesterday morning. The new cook cut her hand with a knife yesterday morning. Yes. Number three, Jorge. Georgie Jorge had a car accident a year ago. Yes. He hurt his bag. Very good. Jorge had a car accident a year ago. He hurt his back. So the first one is had, H-A-D, and he hurt, which is the same as in parentheses. Past tense is the same, hurt, he hurt his back. Number four, Mrs. Henderson. Mrs. Henderson broke a tooth. She had to go to the dentist. Very good. Mrs. Henderson broke a tooth, she had to go to the dentist. Number five, in ho. In ho fell on the steel. Uh, he sprained his wrist. Very good. In ho fell, F E L L, he fell on the stairs. He sprained yes. his wrist. That's a, a regular verb, so we just add ed to make it past tense, okay? okay. Because sprain is a regular verb, it's not irregular. He sprained his wrist. 
Um, exercise B, complete the sentences. Maria had a bad accident in her house. She he fell down, down the stairs and she sprained his, her arm. Very good. Maria had a bad accident at her house. She fell down the stairs and she sprained her arm. She sprained her arm. We'll try number two. Yeah. Andrew broke. Uh, no. No. Andrew it. got. Uh, got. Yes, got, he got hurt. Got, uh, hurt at work. He broke his ankle and he went to the emergency room. Very good. Andrew got hurt at work. He broke his ankle and he went to the emergency room. Number three, Milan. Milan uh, got sick last week. She had the flu. Uh, I took her to the doctor. Very good. Milan got sick last week. She had the flu. I took her to the doctor. I took her to the doctor. Okay, let's look over on the next page. Look at the pictures. What happened? Write a sentence to describe each person's injury and use the past tense. So you have to look at the picture to determine what they did and how they got hurt. Mm -hmm. So number one, this man is loading boxes on a truck. He hurt his back. Yes. He hurt his back. I'll try number two. Yes. She broke her leg. She broke her leg or her ankle. It looks like it might be her ankle. She broke her ankle. Her ankle. She broke her ankle. Mm -hmm. Number three. And uh, he hurt his his foot. He broke a vase yeah, he and he cut his foot. He he broke and he a cut. vase and he cut his foot. He cut his foot on the glass, right? The, yes. the broken glass. He mm -hmm. cut his foot on broken glass. Yeah. And number four. Um, she, she fell on the wet floor. Yes, she fell. On the mm -hmm. And she got hurt. It doesn't really say what happened, but she got hurt. She yes. fell on the wet floor and got hurt. Yes. Number five. Uh, he he burned his finger. He burned his hand ironing. Yeah. Iron. He burned his hand with the iron. Yeah. He burned his hand with the iron. He burned his hand with the iron. Yeah. And the last one, number six. Uh, she broke his uh, his wrist. I don't know his if she wrist. broke it or she um, sprained it, but she hurt her wrist yes. playing basketball. She hurt her wrist playing basketball. We don't know if it's broken or not because she's just showing that it hurts. Yes. She hurt her wrist playing basketball. Mm. Um, do you know of anyone else who's ever been hurt? Mm. Maybe one of your children or your husband? Sorry? I want you to write sentences. Yeah. Um, the, the example they gave you in the book is, my sister broke her arm when she was 11 years old. She fell from a tree. Yeah. My brother broke her uh... His his uncle, when he was playing, uh, was when, he playing? He play, when he was playing football. Football? Yes, football. Oh, soccer. Okay. okay. Do you call soccer football or soccer? In Egypt, we, we call it football. Football? Yes. That's what they do in South America too. They call it football. Yes. 
Yes. In this country, we call it soccer, soccer because yes. we have American football, which is very different. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so we call soccer soccer because we call American football football. Yes. A lot of people in other countries don't have what we call American football, so they call soccer football soccer. because it's a game you play with your feet, right? Yes. Okay. This next one is going to take a little bit of time. It's one of those where we read the... Um, article i don't know if you want to do that today or do you want to save that for next week oh for next week please <laughs> you want to save it till next week yeah okay this reading is going to take some time because we have to read through this and it will take um quite a bit of time so we'll save that one till next week and we'll end our we'll end at the end of lesson six we got a lot done today we did six lessons today yes that's a lot to yeah. cover mm -hmm. um so if you decide you want to write something, Christine, you just go ahead and do that and uh, let yes. me know. You don't have to. It's not a requirement, um, but it is very good practice. Yes, I know. Yes, the writing, I try. It, it's very, very good practice. So if you get a chance and it's something you'd like to try, yes. I'll be more than happy to help you with it. So let me know. Okay. Um, but I, I, it's a very, very good thing to do. You just let me know and um, I'll go yeah with you okay yes okay thank you miss elsa all right you take care christine have a good week you too thank you thank um, you so much bye bye